We have a fantastic lecture tonight. It's been one of our missions to combine local history with interesting history. And often, of course, you know, we've had a lot of topics on different things. Probably the premier local history that's, that's good on a national scale is, of course, the Battle of New Orleans, which we've done a little bit. But also, a lot, of, a lot of us don't know, at least my students didn't know, that the sugar refinery here is one of the most, the largest and most important in not only the country, but the world. So um, it gives me great pleasure to have our speaker tonight. And to um, introduce our speaker, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tommy Warner, the Chancellor of Nunez. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Curtis. You said just about everything I wanted to say, but uh, once again, we have, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We, as I've told you, every time I'm up here, we think this is a, a real fine uh, learning experience for all of us. And it's one of the things that we do probably better than anybody else in this state. I don't know any other um, schools, any other universities or colleges that have this much of a history lecture series. We do ours once a month. And we capture things that are important not only to the community, but what's happening all over the United States and the world. So uh, once again, this is going to be a nice history lecture. And I think you'll see at the end of it, there's going to be some nice little surprises. Tonight's uh, lecture is Peter Mariah. Peter is the director of the Domino Sugar Refinery. The Chalmette Refinery has been here since 1909. I want you to think about that. 1909. So it just isn't out there from 1950. Very important. They produce and package over 1.8 billion, billion, uh, pounds of sugar annually, and they have over 200 sugarcane products. So I want you to think about that too. You're going to see some of the different ones, and Peter's going to mention those to you. The plant employs 300 people here in St. Bernard Parish. Not all from St. Bernard, we know that, but it's a plant that, that's uh, something that's kind of like it's hidden a little bit. I don't know how because that building is very big, and you can see it as you're driving along St. Bernard Highway, but we, we didn't realize that before either. And 70% of the raw sugar that's processed, or over 70% of the raw sugar that's processed in Louisiana is right there at the Domino Sugar. So without much further ado, I just want to say this about Peter Mariah. He's also on our process technology board. He does a tremendous job. He's uh, actually employed a, a number of our students here who, who graduated and moved on to him. He's doing a great job for us. We appreciate his, his expertise. He's an adjunct professor also at the uh, Nickel State University, and I want you to know this, he, he gives uh, these types of projections and, and lectures at different times there too. So uh, he's also one of us as far as a university professor. So without further ado, ado Peter Mariah. Thank you so much, Peter. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tommy. Um, before I start, uh, it's an honor for me to be up here uh, as part of the uh, lecture series. Um, hopefully, after tonight, you get a little idea of what we do at the Chalmette Refinery. Um, the presentation is about 42 minutes, and I'll go through an outline as to um, what we'll go over today. Um, American Sugar Refining Inc., that's our company. We'll talk a little bit about that. The Chalmette Refinery, the history and facts of that refinery. Now I have a little problem. Our top five responsibilities at the plant. Raw sugar supplies, our markets, where we sell our sugar. The categories of products at the refinery, the packaged products, some of our customers we serve, what we call our Chalmet treasures, our recovery story, our vision, and then at the end, any questions that you'd like for me to answer. So you can see where we're going from where 
the company that owns the Chalmette Refinery to basically the vision of the future at the Chalmette Refinery. That's a picture of a refinery in 1912. You can see where it's a very large structure and we're very proud of this uh, particular print. That's the refinery as we see it today. That was taken last week, right off North Peter Street. This is an old uh, ad from 1909, Domino Sugar. Uh, to the right of me is a, a new ad. Personally, I like the old ad. I think it has a little more character to it. Um, sometimes we go backwards instead of forwards, but that's, that's a beautiful thing. And uh, again, 1909, and Domino Sugar's been uh, in existence since 1840. We're very proud of this. We're at presently 833 days without lost time injury. Um, on January the 31st, we uh, celebrated one million man hours without lost time injury. Thank you. July 25th, 2007, two years without lost time injury. And I really feel that excellence and safety carries with it manufacturing excellence. So we basically strive to basically make sure that that workplace is safe for everyone that that basically is employed at that, our plant. We're privately owned jointly by Florida Crystal Incorporated and the Cane Sugar Refineries of Florida. That's a joint uh, venture that bought Domino Sugar and the other refineries in 2001. It's the largest cane sugar corporation in the world. The refineries, we have a refinery in Yonkers, New York. Uh, we find 4 million pounds a day, annually, uh, 975 million per year. Baltimore, 6.1 million pounds, 1.6 billion pounds a year. The Great Chalmette Refinery, which is the largest refinery, 6.7 million pounds per day, uh, 1.798, which was last year's production. The Crocker Refinery in California, 6 million pounds a day, 1.36 billion pounds a year. We just purchased a plant in Toronto, Canada, 4.5 million pounds of sugar a day, and 1.2 billion a year. And we have a little refinery in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, 2.8 million pounds, uh, 640 million pounds a year. The numbers per day, every day, that we're operating, those plants, 29,800,000 pounds a day, 7.6 billion pounds a year. Hopefully you'll see where a lot of that sugar goes. It's not just in coffee. It is not. <laughs> it goes into a lot of different things. And I'll give you a little example. When you walk through a grocery store, there is no way that you can pass through any aisle where there's not cane sugar in those products. And I'll give you a little idea of what those products mean to you and to the rest of the world and of course our armed forces also. We have facilities also in Chicago, Cleveland, Charlotte, Gretna, Louisiana, Calumet, Illinois, not Chalumet, Calumet. Memphis, Tennessee, and Birmingham, Alabama. These are, area, these are facilities that we send our sugar to and they make liquid sugar at these facilities. Brand names. These are names that, are, that basically are the Domino brands or whatever other brands we have that are product, what we call uh, refinery brand names. The great name of Domino Sugar, Florida Crystal, C&H, and Red Pet Sugars. Domino Sugars, the Baltimore Refinery, Yonkers, Chalmette, Florida Crystal, West Palm Beach, CNH, that's Crockett, California. When you go west of the Mississippi, you very seldom see Domino bags in North Dakota, uh, uh, Montana. You'll see CNH. Uh, and Red Pet Sugars is in, in Toronto. 
We also have private labels. We make private labels for Walmart, Winn-Dixie, Kroger, Sabre Center, and Cracker Barrel, and so many other different uh, private labels. It's the same sugar. There's no difference. Okay, the Chalmette Refinery. We're located on the Mississippi River. We're between the Jackson Barracks and the Chalmette uh, Monument on North Peter Street and Araby on 77 acres of land. We're the largest cane sugar refinery in the Western Hemisphere and the second in the world right now. I think later on you'll see what we're trying to do is become the number one cane sugar refinery in the world and we feel like we can. We refine yearly 1.8 billion pounds of raw sugar into over 200 grocery and industri industrial cane sugar products. Some of those products are displayed on this table. These products are distributed throughout the nation into foreign countries and also to our armed forces. The construction of the plant started in 1905. On May 17, 1909, the refinery began refining 3 million pounds a year, utilizing about 1,600 people. So it took about five, four years to build that plant. At one time, people tell me that was the largest brick building in the state of Louisiana. It was also one of the, was the largest manufacturing facility in the United States of America. At that time, even though it was 3 million pounds a, a day, it was the largest cane sugar refinery in the world, right here in St. Bernard Parish. May the 17th is a special day at the Chalmette Refinery. Uh, 2009 will have our centennial anniversary. There's not that many plants today that can last a million years, still be the second largest refinery in the world, and some people think that we're the most efficient uh, I, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. A lot of people think we're the most efficient. I don't think so. I think we can do better. Today we refine 6.7 million pounds with 330 great employees. We generate our own electricity. We generate our own steam. We also make our potable water, our own potable water, upwards of 2 million gallons of water per day. We don't drink it all. A lot of it goes into processing. Somebody asked me, do you drink that much water? <laughs> no. All of our packaging of grocery and industrial products are done on site, and bulk, our bulk uh, shipments are also done on site. The products are shipped by rail, ship, truck, and barge. If you can get an airplane on the plant, we'll put that those packages in that airplane. All of our maintenance is provided through a variety of crafts and engineering professions. We also have the capability of uh, warehousing 15 million pounds of grocery products, finished products. We can keep in various silos and bins, as we call them, 10 million pounds of refined sugar. We provide expertise and consulting to our customers in food technology and in um, other areas of expertise. What that really means is if a customer is having a problem or if they need our uh, consulting, we will send my engineers or whomever to these plants to help those customers and we don't charge those customers a penny. We feel like that's a partnership between our plant and those uh, food companies. We're also proud to be one of the sponsors of Nunez uh, Process Technology Program. Uh, Dr. Warner came to us a number of years ago. He's a heck of a salesman. He's a, he is. He's a great man. And we're very honored to be part of the uh, group and also the Murphys and the Mobiles and the other industries that are here supporting this facility. Are we finding? Sugar is an all-natural process. 
Uh, many people think, well, what kind of chemicals do you add into sugar refining? The process is a, an old process. It's a very safe process, and we feel, feel very proud of it. We are projected to run this year 270 days. We operate 24 hours a day. Some operating expenses. Now, I can't go into all the expenses because I'm not allowed to. But just in raw sugar that we buy, $360 million worth of raw sugar every year. Wages, $17 million a year. This year's produ production projection is 1.8 billion pounds of sugar. Our responsibilities uh, to maintain a safe and secure workplace. A lot of people say that. We have some numbers to prove that, as you, as you saw earlier in the, um, the other slide. Provide the nation and the world with the highest quality products 100% of the time. That's 100% of the time, not 99.9% .9 of the time. You want your food to be 100% safe and the quality to be there 100% of the time. Recruit the best personnel that will care and contribute their talents towards continuous improvement of the plant on a daily basis. I'll use that old-fashioned word, care. You can get a very intelligent person. You can get a very motivated person. Does he care about the plant? Will he care about the plant? Time will tell. Job is to teach train our personnel to in time become wise refiners. There's a lot of intelligent people out there today. How many of them are wise? Hopefully in time, with intelligence and motivation and caring, people will be wise refiners making that plant better than it is today. A long and lasting commitment to both the local and state economical industrial bases. When Katrina came, the owners of Domino Sugar did not ever hesitate, not one second, of not opening that plant. Not one second. These are some of the departments that we have. Safety, security, raw sugar, processing, quality and environmental, packaging, maintenance, warehousing and shipping, informa information technology, human resources, financial and sales, Really, they're departments, but they're all great people. And that's the key to this presentation. You can see I talk a lot about people. That's what makes our plant so great. It's our people. Raw sugar. Our raw sugar supplies come from basically three different uh, states in America. 72% uh, of our raw sugar comes from the state of Louisiana. Basically, we refined 60% of the raw sugar grown in Louisiana. 23% from Texas. 100% of their product comes to Chalmette. 5% from Florida. We have received raw sugar from over 55 countries in every continent in the world. Some of the countries I've never heard of. From the last 10, from the last 10 years, we've been on a domestic diet, as we call it. Domestic raw sugar is delivered by 3 million pound barges and also basically 45,000 pound trucks. About 70% of the raw sugar coming into Chalmette comes by way of barges. So if we're refining, let's just say 6.7 million pounds a day, we're offloading two barges every day and we're getting about 700,000 pounds of truck sugar. So about 30% of our sugar comes by way of truck. Uh, one of the mills is in Wasteland, the other one is Lafouche. Offshore sugar, which comes in ocean vessels, we've um, offloaded raw sugar um, ships uh, with 80 million pounds of sugar per cargo. Those are the large uh, raw sugar ships from Hawaii. <clears throat> 
some of our uh, primary markets, the Midwest, our products from Chalmette, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Missouri, Southwestern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and New Mexico, the southern states of Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, uh, Mississippi, and Tennessee. And you notice I put Louisiana and Alabama real close because of the game last Saturday. <laughs> well, I'm glad we won that game. <laughs> Foreign countries, we're sending sugar into Mexico, Canada, Puerto Rico. Uh, we've also sent sugar to countries as far away as Iraq when uh, the Iraqis were fighting the Iranians. We would send tons and tons and tons of, of sugar to that, to that country. So basically we can send our products anywhere, anywhere in the world right now. We supply at this refinery. 20% of the cane sugar in the United States of America. When Katrina hit Chalmette, uh, it hit the food industries also. There were many plants around the country that could not make their products because they did not have sugar to make the products. And we also supply our armed forces. Uh, you can get an MRE and you'll see Domino little packets of uh, Domino sugar, which we're very proud of. These are the categories of raw sugar or the products that we make at the plant. And this was from October the 1st, 2006 to September the 30th, 2007. Uh, 1.798 billion pounds. White sugar, 1.58 billion pounds. 88% of our product is in white sugar. Brown sugar, 66 million pounds. It's about 3.5%. Sorry about this, new toy. Uh, specialty sugars, uh, 34 million. Liquid sugars, 22 million. Powdered sugars, 55 million. Liquid molasses, 5.7 million. And blackstrap molasses, which is the byproduct of refining sugar, about 32 million pounds of that. So if you add all that up, that's how much sugar, basically, and these are the categories, the major categories. Um, the product lines, white sugars and brown sugars, liquid sugars and powdered sugars, dots and cube sugars, large grain sugars, which we call brilliant sugars, pharmaceutical and canning sugars, blended molasses products, sugar and cinnamon, brown honey and molasses co-crystallized sugars, which are specialty products, customer screen sugar, and of course blackstrap molasses. Within those groups, you may have three different brown sugars. And in white sugars, we have different screen sugars. So when it's all said and done, we have about 200 different products. The package products, 0.01 ounces of packets, the little package that you see in, in, in stores. Just to give you a little idea, we have five machines that put sugar in packets. Now they produce so many packets per minute. Take a guess of how many packets per machine they can put in a minute. Take a guess. How many? How many? A million? Five thousand. How much? Five thousand. Five thousand? A little lower. This is like the price of rice. You gotta go a little lower. Okay. 2,200 per machine per minute. So we've had five machines, they're putting out 10,000 packets a minute when they're running. Who said a million? <laughs> That's a good guess. I'll go back and tell my packaging uh, manager, I need a million packets a machine. <laughs> they said it at noon as they're right. <laughs> okay. We also put out four, five, 10, 25, 50, and 100 pound bags. A lot of these products are displayed here, right on this table. One pound boxes, 
two pound poly bags, 2,200 tote bags or super sacks, 45,000 pound granulated and liquid trucks, 185,000 pound granular and liquid rail cars. This number here, 185,000 pound granulated and liquid rail cars. Every day coming out of Chalmette, we load 18 rail cars of granulated sugar per day. And that's going to the biggest food companies in the world. We also put 3 million pounds of bulk and package uh, products in barges going up to Chicago and St. Louis. And we put uh, 60 million pounds of sugar in ships in 110 pound, what we call kilo bags. That's offshore. It can go to Haiti, Iraq, uh, you name it, we can send it there. Many a times if a country is in trouble with famine, you'll see our sugar, tr our sugar um, ships going to those countries. This is some of uh, some lines that we have. That's uh, what we call a unitizer that unitizes four and five and ten pound bags for SAMs. If you go into SAMs and you see a display with bags that you can pull off without ripping any uh, uh, stretch wrap, it's coming from Chalmette. There's a, 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 um, a pallet of 25 pound bags of sugar. These are the various um, bulk sugars going out in Walmart trucks. To the right, on the upper right hand corner, that's a bulk truck, a bulk car, I'm sorry, where uh, we put 185,000 to 190,000 pounds. These are rail cars of uh, liquid sugar. Uh, and to the right, uh, on the bottom right hand, those are super sacks. Okay, some of the great customers that we have. And let me say this about our customers. Uh, Dorian and Katrina, again, our customers um, really stood behind uh, our, our plant. They like the sugar that we produce. Um, uh, our competitors were saying a lot of things about, about the Chalmette refinery uh, that it would never start up again. Uh, boy, they, they made a mistake when they said that. Um, every, that really got us, that, that got us upset. So McKee Baking, Little Debbie's, great customer. Blue Bell Ice Cream. Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, they make vitamin pills and cough medicines. Hershey Foods, chocolate bars. Nabisco, cookies and cereal. Pillsbury, cake mixes. Coca-Cola. Various beverages. Sara Lee, cookies, cakes, and breads. Quaker Oats, Life Cereal. When you're eating Life Cereal, our sugar's in there. And we're the only ones that make that sugar for Life Cereal. Just to give you an order of magnitude, uh, just for Life Cereal, we'll send uh, uh, to Quaker Oats uh, approximately these days. 400,000 pounds of sugar per week. M&M Mars, Skittles, and Snickers. M&M Mars is a plant in Waco, Texas. They make all the Skittles in the world. They buy most of our sugar from us, uh, upwards of a million pounds a week. Kraft Foods, barbecue sauce. Kellogg's, cereals. Walmart, 5, 10, and 25 pound bags. Hiram and Walker, cordials and liqueurs. Who, who clapped? <laughs> the, the, the person with the million bed? Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Nestle's. Do you ever have Nerds candy? Nerds? What could I say? Uh, we make it. Uh, we make the product here, and we also make it from our Crockett refinery that goes to a plant in Chicago. Uh, normally, during the busy seasons, we'll send um, to, to that facility um, 100,000 pounds a week for about four months. Chalmette Treasures. We have resolved and committed 
owners. We have true owners. They're family people. They're, they're, this is a private company, but they're great people. They uh, really um, made a commitment to this, to our plan and this, and this area. Very, very, uh, I'm very uh, fortunate to have a great experience in tested personnel. We have state-of-the-art packaging technology. And this plan has the ability to overcome adversity, as most of us in this area had to endure for the last two, and a, two plus years. To me, those are treasures. Personnel, robotic cells, um, hurricane fighters, as we call them, and great owners. Not too many manufacturing facilities can have that in their treasure chest. And I'll go a little further in a little more detail as to why I think they're treasures. Experience and tested staff. Just in, um, just in the staff, we have over a thousand years of cane sugar refining and packaging experience. That's just in the staff. Uh, I contribute 33 years to that number. We have two instructors at Nickel State in their cane sugar refining. We're the only refinery that has two instructors to a world-renowned um, facility that basically brings refiners from all over the world, from China, from Philippines, from Europe, from Canada, from all over the United States every July. And we're very fortunate in having two people that can, uh, uh, that can teach the future refiners of the world. We have a number of refiners of the future being schooled every day in various uh, training programs, uh, which Nichols is part of that training facility. We have state-of-the-art packaging technology. We presently, after the, after the um, hurricane, we replaced a lot of things. We repaired a lot of things and also we modernized the plant. We now have four robotic cells, which I'll show you some pictures of. They're great pieces of equipment. They're the state of the art. In fact, they named, they named these uh, robotic cells. Uh, there's peak number one, peak number two, peak number three, and peak number four. Why is everybody laughing? Those are great names. Uh, we have five state-of-the-art palletizers, three modern stretch wrappers, one unitized packaging system, five industrial baggers, an order of magnitude, one of those baggers uh, putting out 50-pound bags, 20,000 bags per machine per day. We have what we call an RFID system, radio frequency information device. We can put a tag on a pallet and know where it is, when it goes to our customers, when it goes on the shelf, uh, I get a lot of information, like, it's almost like Big Brother. We also have a, a SAP system that basically controls all, all of our business uh, items. All of our equipment is PLC based and conveying systems. We also have a great workforce to support and to uh, maintain that equipment. This is all being geared to delight our customers and our future customers. Uh, most of all of this was put post Katrina. There's one of our one of our robots. That's one of our palletizers. These bags are going to Mexico. There's a robotic cell right here. Uh, it's picking up some bundles and putting it on a pallet. There's our stretch wrappers. Actually, after the sugar is put on pallets, we put a stretch wrap around it so it doesn't move and it keeps the products clean. That's a picture of our warehouse. Recovery to the future, our finest hour. Through adversity, bears the courage and sacrifice of result and resolve of great personnel. I really mean this. It really showed a lot of courage and sacrifice and resolve, not only at the Chalmette Refinery, but everybody that lives in this metropolitan area. We're, we're kind of special down here.
This is some facts of post Katrina. First time in the refinery's 98 year history that has been compromised by a hurricane. We had two to six feet of water in our plant. All of our employees throughout the, the recovery program were paid. Nobody lost a day's pay. About 70% of our people come from St. Bernard Parish. We actually built a FEMA village on land that we leased uh, west of us. And we basically had 190 employees and their families living in the West Camp. And putting that plan together at any one time, we needed 350 contractors from all over the country. At any one time, we had 150 electricians from Alabama, New York City, uh, Pennsylvania, California, Wisconsin, coming down to try to get that plant up and running so that basically we can handle the raw sugar coming from Louisiana and supplying the food companies of, in, in this country. The repairs and replacements and, and modernization just on the, uh, just in that vein was $70 million. The refinery basically got back to full capacity in March of 2006. We've had 85 new employees. Many people left this area, left the company for various reasons, as you know. So we have 85 new employees. Our jobs are to teach them and train them and make them better than the people that we lost, even though we've lost a lot of great people. Since then, we've had some people come back to Domino Sugar. Uh, our, our, our management uh, feels like if a person's left in good standings, we will make room for them somewhere in that plant. Since Katrina, every safety, operating, and production record has been broken. That's a picture of the, of the refinery uh, when it was hit with waters looking from the Mississippi. Uh, the first responders actually lived on a barge, and they gave me a pod on the right-hand corner, home sweet home. They gave me a river view, you know, looking at the Mississippi. Well, there were 21 people, and uh, we lived on that barge because there was nothing else, and uh, we slept there, ate there, and came up with plans. That's a picture of one of our buildings that basically got pretty hit with some high winds on window damage, more window damage. Uh, a lot of our uh, sugar that was in our warehouse, 5.8 million pounds of sugar was compromised uh, with floodwaters. Uh, Four feet of water, you got sugar in pallets, sugar dissolves, everything falls over. Uh, yeah, I want to get that other picture. Let's see. Okay, uh, some other highlights. On August the 29th, we started accounting for the 326 personnel. So on the day of the hurricane, we actually try to find out where are, where are our people. On September the 8th and through the 13th, we are in West Palm Beach coming up with the plans to get that plan up and running. September the 16th, we are on site uh, with 21 first responders. Uh, we had to just come back with 21 because we only had 21 beds on that barge. So we had to pick and choose on who was going to come, pipe fitters and mechanics and our safety supervisor, our financial uh, director, Alan Reichert, uh, our vice president of operations and myself uh, were there to basically start the recovery program. September the 19th, all 326 personnel were accounted for, thank goodness. Uh, the, it was very agonizing. You get, well, you got 326, well, now we're down to 270. And now you're down to 110. And now you're down to 50. And then you don't hear any differences the next day. And now you're down to 25. And then you don't hear anything for a couple of days. And then as time went on, you thought of the worst. But thank goodness everybody was accounted for. October the 12th, our last of the 270 FEMA trailers were placed on site. We had to build roads. 
we had to put electricity in there, we had to put plumbing in there, uh, we had to name the streets, we had to have evacuation centers, we had to have fire protection, we had to have a place for the kids to go to the bus stop. Um, we built the village. We had to have some tough rules also. I was the governor, I was the judge, I did everything. But, the, but we, we had no incidences at all. We had three and we had to ask those people to leave. But it was a, a great experience for, for seeing how people can get along in a very, in a very tragic situation. September the 28th, diesel. We had a diesel generator that we had on a flatbed truck. We finally got lights into the refinery. Um, that was the first lights that actually we felt were in St. Bernard Parish. And you had 21 grown men looking at a building that had lights in it. Um, we just stared at it. Nobody said anything. Um, it's almost like you know you lit a Christmas tree and you just stare at it. It was it, kind of special. November the second, we finally were able to get natural gas into our refinery, and our boilers were lit online. November the third, we had potable water treatment. Those two things basically said, hey, you got the possibility of starting up that refinery. November the 14th, all 270 trailers were basically um, ready for occup occupying. So basically, that basically said we can bring all of our people in. So as we got 10 trailers uh, ready, to, ready to be occupied, we, we brought 10 people in. Another 30, we brought 30 people in. By November the 14th, we had all 270 available. December the 5th, the refining uh, operation started. And that's after 98 days. Um, never, n never, never do this for me. When experts say things, don't necessarily believe them. Experts said that they, we would never start that refinery up. Those experts never came to the refinery. How did they know we would never start up? I think those people should have come here and saw that we started up just to see what people can do if they work together. November the 9th, we had sugar approved for our customers, a big, big day. You can stop the refinery up, but if it doesn't meet certain qualities that goes into all those foods I told you about, you're just making white stuff. So that was a big day. And everything that we produced, every product, had to go through a meticulous set of, uh, of uh, analysis in our laboratory. The worst thing you can do is to put something out there that people are going to get sick or that's going to ruin our name as Domino Sugar. Too many people have sweated. Uh, and, and worked so hard to protect that name. This was a picture that was taken by one of our contractors. This was a picture that uh, we put a flag at the highest building, which is our filter house. Oops. And he took a picture, and there's our stacks, and in the background, it's not too good of a picture, is, um, is New Orleans. And um, we felt one of our models was that we would be a stronger and better Chalmette refinery. And that picture made a lot of postcards, made postcards out of it, it went into a number of magazines also. Our vision, to become the safest, largest, and most diversified cane sugar refinery in the world. Can it be done? It will be done. Our mission is clear. Our resolve is uncompromised. But through our people, we'll be the best of the best of cane sugar plants worldwide, here in America, here in Louisiana, and here in St. Bernard Parish. Chalmette Refinery, it's a special place. Our future is bright for our people. Thank you, the beginning. Domino basically came from, um, uh, we were getting a lot of raw sugar from Cuba, and as you know, one of the, uh, one of the biggest games in Cuba was Domino, and they, they, liked, they liked the name, and they basically put, put that as their uh, hallmark, as a, as a name. That's what I've been told. So, 
as you know, with litigations and things like that, there's a lot, uh, we have to be a lot, uh, we have to watch ourselves a lot closer. But if any, any group would like to go through that refinery, we can make arrangements and we can take you through some tours uh, of that plant. So the answer to your question, yes, we still do that. What, can some, what some companies will do is they'll buy the raw sugar and then give us the raw sugar and then basically we refine it for them. But as far as Sam's, no, we process all the sugar and our competitors do too for Sam's and Walmart. They don't do any processing or any bagging at all. All that sugar, good question. None of it was reprocessed. All of it basically was we were insured. They made uh, alcohol out of it. Not the drinking. But none of it was reprocessed. Now I'm going to say something also. In the refining process, we could have refined that perfectly. It would have been perfect. But just imagine, Domino Sugar refining Katrina Sugar. No matter what I would say, right? I mean, let's, let's face it. None of it was reprocessed, not one pound. It was all basically insured. They made alcohol somewhere in Michigan. Uh, that was uh, 28 million pounds of raw sugar, 28 million pounds of sugar out of Myers. Am I, am I correct, Pat? Correct. And 15 and uh, 5 million pounds of finished product out of, uh, from Domino. So all of it, none of it was reprocessed. Good question. Good question. One of the things about ethanol is that if it's not government subsidized, you can make you make more money selling sugar than ethanol. Uh, the uh, governments of um, Brazil, uh, they are heavily subsidized by the government to do that. And and also, it's kind of interesting about ethanol. It takes a lot of power to make ethanol. So here you are making ethanol. Here's a power plant burning oil to make ethanol. Uh, so the economics are not good for us at this point in time. Things change. Uh, believe me, my company is a very aggressive company. Uh, when the, if things change, I'm sure that we will be in that business if it ever did come about. Good question. No, there's not enough, not enough current to basically produce that amount of electricity that we really need. Right now, what we do is we, we burn natural gas. Uh, on our, uh, uh, that natural gas produces high pressure steam. Steam goes over the turbines, making electricity, and then we use the steam for the processing end. So it's very cheap for us to make electricity. We, will make, we can make up to 12 megawatts of, of electricity. Give you an idea, all of our area we can light up and some, maybe some other areas that we can light up when, when before Katrina. Um, but it's very cheap to do it. The biggest expense in making power today is buying the generators. To buy a uh, five megawatt turbine today, maybe three and a half million to four hundred, three and a half million to four million dollars. The turbines that we use, believe it or not, 1950 vintage. They were bought surplus from the United States Navy. They are excellent pieces of equipment. You can't buy that equipment today. You can't. We got pit bulls out there, and they're selling us French poodles. Okay, great, great equipment. Great equipment. White House was built in 1865. We, uh, the first thing that we did when we came back from Katrina, it had roof damage, it was been re re repaired. Uh, and we're slowly but surely going to renovate it and make it, make it into maybe a small museum and some, some, um, off some uh, meeting rooms. But it's been there since before the, way before the plant. There were 22 insurance companies involved in that claim, 22. We had, um, um, in, fa in fact, Here's an insurance company that pays for salaries. Here's another insurance for wind damage. Here's another for finished product. Here's a, another insurance for unfinished product. Here's a, a, uh, an insurance for the dock. Here's an insurance for the power plant. So you had 22 insurance companies. We had adjusters on site from the end of September through April, around the clock, three of those people on site living in a camp. The insurance company, just to give you an idea, the insurance company felt like the best we could do in starting up that refinery was in May. That was their best guess. These insurance companies. They were there to make sure that we did not procrastinate and not start that refinery up from a business interruption standpoint. We just told the insurance company, get out of our way because we know what we're doing and we'll get this plan up faster than you've ever seen before. They're writing basically uh, we've set a mark on how to get a plan up and running very quickly. We have, again, 
we have very experienced people. We're cane sugar refiners. When I do retire, whenever that may be, I will stop being the plant manager at Chalmette, but I'll always be a cane sugar refiner. That's our job. Well, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Hopefully you know a little more about Domino Sugar and the people. It's a big plant, it's a great plant. Um, as you can see, we're very proud of that plant, all of us.